We continue now with the teaching of St. Louis de Mumford on true devotion to Mary. And he's going to finish, remember he's commenting on this passage of Esau and Jacob in the Old Testament. And he's finishing now the section on Esau and uh, those who do not choose to be Our Lady's children. The reprobate sells their birthright, that is to say, the pleasure of paradise. They sell it for a pottage of lentils, that is to say, for the pleasures of the earth. They laugh, they drink, they eat, they amuse themselves, they gamble, they dance, and take no more pains than Esau did to render themselves worthy of the benediction of their heavenly Father. In a word, they think only of earth, and they love earth only, and they speak and act only for earth and for its pleasures, selling for one moment of enjoyment, for one vain puff of honor, for a morsel of hard metal, yellow or white, their baptismal grace, their robe of innocence, and their heavenly inheritance. Finally, the reprobate daily hate and persecute the predestinate openly and secretly. They feel the predestinate as a burden to them. They despise them. They criticize them. They counterwork them. They abuse them. They rob them. They cheat them. They impoverish them. They drive them away. They bring them low into the dust, while they themselves are making fortunes, are taking their pleasures, getting themselves into good positions, enriching themselves, aggrandizing themselves, and living at their ease. As to Jacob the Younger, so this is now, now he's going to talk, of course, about Jacob and what we should be doing, the, what the children of Our Lady do. As to Jacob the Younger, he was a feeble constitution, meek and peaceful. He lived for the most part at home, in order to gain the good graces of his mother, Rebecca, whom he loved tenderly. If he went abroad, it was not of his own will, nor through any confidence in his own industry, but to obey his mother. He loved and honored his mother. It was on this account that he kept at home. He avoided everything which could displease her, and did everything which he thought would please her, and this increased the love which Rebecca already had for him. He was subject in all things to his dear mother. He obeyed her entirely in all matters, promptly without delaying, and lovingly without complaining. At the least token of her will, little Jacob ran and worked, and he believed everything she said to him. For example, when she told him to fetch two kids, and that he should fetch them in order that she should prepare something for his father Isaac to eat, Jacob did not reply that one was enough to make a dish for a single man, but without reasoning, he did what she told him to do. He had great confidence in his dear mother. As he did not lean in the least on his own ability, he lent exclusively on the care and protection of his mother. He appealed to her in all his necessities and consulted her in all his doubts. For example, when he asked if instead of a blessing he should not receive a curse from his father, he believed her and trusted her when she said that she would take the curse upon herself. Lastly, he imitated as far as he could the virtues he saw in his mother. It seems as if one of his reasons for leading such a sedentary life at home was to imitate his dear mother, who was virtuous and kept herself removed from bad company, which corrupt the morals. By this means, he made himself worthy to receive the double benediction of his beloved father. Such also is the conduct which the predestinate daily observe. They are sedentary and homekeepers. So he's going to apply all of this right now to us. They are sedentary and homekeepers with their mother. In other words, they love retirement in our interior. And that's on a side note, that's something St. Alphonsus Liguori emphasizes, that he says all the saints have, have, have longed for, have sought out solitude, even if their lives were very busy in the midst of the world, but they've sought those moments of, of quiet and solitude over and over again for prayer, for the interior life. They give themselves to prayer, but it is after the example and in the company of their mother, the Holy Virgin, the whole of whose glory is within, 
and who, during her whole life, so much loved retirement and prayer. It is true that they sometimes appear without in the world, but it is in obedience to the will of God and that of their dear mother to fulfill the duties of their state. However, apparent, however apparently important their outward works may be, they esteem still more highly those which they do within themselves in the interior, in the company of the Blessed Virgin. For it is within that they accomplish the great work of their perfection, compared with which all their other works are but infant sports. It is on this account that while sometimes their brothers and sisters are working outwardly with much energy, success, and skill, in the praise and with the approbation of the world, they, on the contrary, know by the light of the Holy Ghost that there is far more glory, more good, and more pleasure in remaining hidden in retreat with Jesus Christ their model, an entire and perfect subjection to their mother, than to do of themselves wonders of nature and grace in the world, as so many Esau's and reprobates do. Glory for God and riches for men are to be found in the house of Mary. Lord Jesus, how sweet are thy tabernacles! The sparrow has found a house to lodge in, the turtle dove a nest for her little ones. O oh, happy is the man who dwells in the house of Mary! where thou wert the first to make thy dwelling. It is in this house of the predestinate that he receives succor from thee alone, and that he has disposed the steps and a sense of all the virtues to raise himself in his heart to the perfection in this veil of tears. The predestinate tenderly love and truly honor our Blessed Lady as their good mother and mistress. They love her not only by their mouth, but in truth. They honor her not only outwardly, but in the bottom of their hearts. They avoid, like Jacob, everything which can displease her, and they practice with fervor whatever they think will make them find favor with her. They bring to her and give her not two kids, as Jacob did to Rebekah, but their body and their soul, with all that depends on them, figured by the two kids of Jacob. They bring to her one, that she may receive them as things which belong to her. Two, that she may kill them. And don't, don't be surprised that she, say, that she may kill them and make them die to sin and self in stripping them of their own skin and their own self-love. And by this means to please Jesus, her son, who wills not to have any of his, for his disciples and friends, but those who are dead to themselves. And and I'll just pause here a moment. That's a great help of this devotion that uh, if we're realistic, you've probably experienced wanting to change, either wanting to break through from a pattern of sin or, or lethargy and a lack of so much good that you should be doing and struggling to do so. Well, Our Lady is very helpful in uh, us who, if we're not as courageous as we should be, she gives us a strength and a courage and with her gentle motherly hands, helps us die to ourselves. Uh, three, so that she may prepare them for the taste of our Heavenly Father and for His greatest glory, which she knows better than any other creature. Four, that by her cares and intercessions, this body and soul thoroughly purified from every stain, thoroughly dead, thoroughly stripped, and well prepared, may be a delicate meat, worthy of the mouth and blessing of our Heavenly Father. Is not this what the predestinate do? who relish and practice the perfect consecration to Jesus Christ by the hands of Mary, which we are now teaching them, by way of testifying to Jesus and Mary an effective and courageous love. The reprobate tells us loudly enough that they love Jesus, and that they love and honor Mary, but it is not with their substance. It is not up to the point of sacrificing to them their body with its senses, their soul with its passions, as the predestinate do. These last are subject and obedient to our Blessed Lady, as to their good mother, after the example of Jesus Christ, who of the 33 years he lived on earth, employed 30 to glorify God his Father by a perfect and entire subjection to his Holy Mother. The predestined obey Mary in following exactly her counsels, as the little Jacob did those of Rebekah, who said to him, My son, Follow my counsels. 
or like the people at the marriage of Cana, to whom Our Lady said, Whatever my son shall say to you, that do. Jacob, for having obeyed his mother, received the blessing, as it were, miraculously, although naturally he would not have had it. The people at the marriage of Cana, for having followed Our Lady's counsel, were honored with Our Lord's first miracle, who there changed the water into wine at the prayer of His Holy Mother. In like manner, all those who at the end of time shall receive the blessing of our Heavenly Father and shall be honored by the wonders of God, shall not only receive their graces in consequence of their perfect obedience, sorry, shall only receive their graces in consequence of their perfect obedience to Mary. So he's emphasizing that that, uh, that key step of obeying her, saying he'll talk more about that, doing everything by Mary scenes, not just trying to do good things with her help, uh, but it means to say, I want you to direct me. Even if I think I know what should be done, I want to look to you and follow your guidance as to what should be done. It, it changes everything. The Esau's, on the contrary, lose their blessing through their want of subjection to the Blessed Virgin. The predestinate also have a great confidence in the goodness and power of our Blessed Lady, their good mother. They call incessantly for her help. They look upon her as their polar star to lead them to a good port. They lay bare to her their pains and their necessities with much openness of heart. They attach themselves to her mercy and her sweetness in order to get the pardon of their sins by her intercession or to taste her maternal sweetnesses in their pains and weariness. They even throw themselves, hide themselves, and lose themselves in an admirable manner in her loving and virginal bosom, that they may be set on fire there of pure love, that they may be cleansed there from their least stain and fully to find Jesus who dwells there is on his most glorious throne. Oh, what happiness! Think not, says the abbot Guerrick, that it is happier to dwell in Abraham's bosom than in Mary's. For it is in this last that our Lord has placed his throne. The reprobate, on the contrary, putting all their trust in themselves, only eat with the prodigal what the swine eat. They eat earth like the toads, and, like the children of the world, they love only visible and external things. They have no relish for the sweetnesses of Mary's bosom. They have not that feeling of a certain resting place and a sure confidence, which the predestinate feel in the Holy Virgin, their good mother. They are miserably attached to their outward hunger, as St. Gregory says, and make not so much as a pretense of having any taste for the sweetness which is prepared within themselves and within Jesus and Mary. Lastly, the predestinate keep the ways of our Blessed Lady, their good mother, that is to say they imitate her. It is in this point that they are truly happy and truly devout and carry more especially the mark of their predestination. This good mother says to them, Beati qui custodiunt vias meas, that is to say, blessed are they who practice my virtues and with the help of divine grace walk in the footsteps of my life. During life they are happy in this world through the abundance of graces and sweetnesses which I impart to them from my fullness and more abundantly than to others who do not imitate me so closely. They are happy in their death, which is mild and tranquil, and at which I am ordinarily present myself, that I myself may conduct them to the joys of eternity. And lastly, they shall be happy in eternity, for never has any one of my good servants been lost who imitated my virtues during life. The reprobate, on the contrary, are unhappy during their life, at their death, and for eternity, because they do not imitate Our Lady in her virtues, but content themselves with sometimes being enrolled in her confraternities, reciting some good prayers in her honor, or going through some other exterior devotion. O Holy Virgin, my good mother, how happy are those, I repeat it with the transport of my heart, how happy are those who, not letting themselves be seduced, by a false devotion towards you, faithfully keep your ways, your counsels, and your orders. But how unhappy and accursed are those who abuse your devotion and keep not the commandments of your Son. 
So we'll pause there before going into tomorrow. He begins talking about some of what Our Lady, uh, how she acts, what she does towards those who choose to become fully her children. And St. Louis de Mumford, who's, uh, remember, he's a Frenchman, a passionate Frenchman and priest, is, is trying uh, sometimes by citing different saints or fathers of the church, sometimes by passionately pouring out his heart by, or making theological reasonings or speaking about the experiences of others to speak of something he experienced so deeply in his own life. And, and he's not alone. Perhaps one of the other best known recent saints is uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe about the incredible difference. Uh, St. Maximilian Kolbe, externally one of the most impressive saints for how much was accomplished in such a short period of time. And in all of that, because he said the key, the thing he spoke about over and over again was giving yourself entirely to Our Lady. So God bless you if you've made it this far in our preparation. We're nearing now, we're approaching the final 10 days of this preparation. And so I will look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue in these last steps preparing for the total consecration of Jesus through Mary. God bless you.